live from New York. It's your Yu-Gi-Oh! News, news Gio, with your host, Davinator1212. Good evening, I'm Davinator1212, and this is news Gio, your monthly Yu-Gi News. These are tonight's top stories for the month of October 2019. October proved itself to be a very important month for Yu-Gi-Oh! Both the TCG and Duel Links both got a ban list, however, neither ban lists were particularly game-changing. Instead, opting to rectify certain small problems with the formats to promote diversity in both games. Famous Yu-Gi-Tuber and head of the Church of Yu-Gi Jesus, Yu-Gi Nono, has come out of retirement and posted not one, but two videos to his channel. Join us later in the broadcast as we have an exclusive interview with Yu-Gi Nono himself. And lastly, we will be looking at rumors surrounding Crystron Needle Fiber and its eventual release to the TCG. Going over this story later tonight will be our special rumor correspondent, Hard Leg Joe. All this and more on tonight's episode of News Geo. The ban list for the TCG had some surprising and not so surprising moves around the limit, unlimit, and semi limited slots, as well as two new additions to the Forbidden slot. Guard Dragon Agrapane and Nightmare Mermaid were both added to the ban list in order to promote less full Orcist combo in the meta, I guess. While Sky Striker Mecha Widow Anchor was added to the limited list in order to slowly but surely chip away at Sky Striker's top spot in the meta, a much long overdue hit. And as far as semi-limits, we got an interesting move to two from one Dark Arm Dragon. Sometimes two dads are better than one. And finally, for the Unlimit, which probably are the most interesting cards for the October ban list, newly at 3 we have Chaos Emperor Dragon. Obviously his errata makes him kind of booty, so it makes sense for him to be at 3. More importantly, however, we managed to get Destiny Hero Malicious, an actual good card back to 3, thank god, as well as Aether the Heavenly Monarch. Obviously Monarchs are a bit past their prime, so... <laughs> prime... get, get it? So having Aether at 3 definitely lets those old school Monarch players have some fun. Same could be said by Stratos and Dragonfly going to 3, because those are also super old decks. Why not? And just in case you were feeling a little bit nostalgic for Dual Salaya's format, El Shadal Construct and Shrit Strategist of the Necroz also got put to 3. The last two were spell cards, both rather interesting, with Royal Tribute. The new ruling about Verifying cards in your opponent's hand obviously makes this card a little bit dubious to use, however, it's still absolutely fantastic and is the power card in the Gravekeeper strategy. And the other spell being the quick play spell, Super Rejuvenation. With Dragon Rulers on the ban list, this deck fails to have a particularly crazy tier 1 home, however, being the absolute broken draw card that it is, it may help to boost some of those lower tier dragon decks that can utilize the discard or tribute mechanic. And now we move to our field reporter Tommy in his debut in the studio with his interview with Yugi No No. Take it away, Thomas. Welcome, Yugi fans, to the News Geo exclusive. I'll be joined today by Yugi Jesus himself, Yugi No No. In just a few moments, we're going to discuss why the channel took such a long hiatus and what he's going to be doing now that he's back. We wait with baby breath for his arrival right now. Oh, here he is! Welcome, you... Eugene? Hey, guys! Uh, hi? Glad to be on the show! Whatever. Fuck it. We're, we're happy to have you. Guys, I thought I was supposed to be talking with Yugi No No. What's going on here? Oh, when he found out that it was Dave's show, he decided to send me instead to screw with him. Um, okay, so anyway, since my script here is totally useless, let's wing it. So, how does that teleportation thing that you and Yugi No No do actually work? You ever see Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory where they put the kid on TV by breaking him up into a bunch of little bits? It's kind of like that. Interesting. Uh, might as well pose the fluff questions to you instead. Uh, if you could get support for a legacy deck, what would it be? Ooh, <laughs> that's easy. Ultra Athletes! Okay then, uh, what do you think of the 
latest ban list. Surely you have an interesting and lengthy take on the unlimits? Not really, because none of my decks got hit. <sighs> okay guys, seriously, you know what? I'm fucking done with this shit. It's fucking stupid. I'm out of here. Finally get on screen, you guys still treat me like an asshole. I'm done. I must be doing really good. Back to you, Dave. <sighs> I don't get paid enough for this stuff. Anyway, for the second ban list discussion of the night, we move to our Duel Links correspondent, Jason, for the Duel Links Corner. Take it away, Jason. What's going on, Duel fans? It's your boy, Ty Wolf, the friendly neighborhood Super Vs, and I welcome you back to Duel Links Corner. Nice costume, Jason. Very festive. Why, thank you. So, uh, who are you supposed to be? Like, like Rick James? No. Eddie Murphy. Vampire Brooklyn. I have no idea who that is. Of course you won't. Let me get back to what I gotta do. The month of October in Duel Links wasn't as eventful as last month. <laughs> Stop laughing at my list, goddammit. You tried talking with these motherfuckers. I'm gonna tell you about the events that took place so far this month. The first event involved a new... Dark Sided Dimension Duel World by bringing in the Unknown Duelist. The Unknown Duelist end up having... Wow, I really do have a wit. <laughs> the Unknown Duelist ends up actually a very jumbled up light deck where she introduced the first of the Cubic support as well as the first of the Constellus support. Overall, you beat her a couple of times, you win a couple of cards, not much to say. The next two events are a little bit easier. They're pretty much a second chance for all you duelists who missed them the first time to win Callan Kessler and Jaden Ubell. Stop laughing, Dave. <laughs> now let's talk about something with a bit more relevance. The ban list. The ban list, much like in the regular TCG, took part in October. So let's start off with the cards that got released from their imprisonment. Imprisonment. The goddamn ones remove off the damn ban list. Released from their captivity is Samurai Skull, Destiny Hero Celestial, and Sylveon Marshmallow Leaf. A lot of S's in those words. I think you did that to me on purpose. I really think you do. I'm sorry, Jason. I didn't realize that this would be such a problem. Let me see if I can say this as clear as possible. I will rip your heart from your chest. <laughs> Keep playing with me. Next up is the Limit 2 list. We're going to start off with Dark Lord Contract, pretty much a searchable monster reborn. Then we're going to go to Neo's Fusion, perhaps the most abused, splashable card they have developed so far in Duel Links. And then they're going to go World Legacy Clash, the quick play battle trap that can actually make an opponent negate their attack and lose massive amount if timed correctly. Finally, to the limit one. We got the Sanctified Dark Lord hit for the same reason as the first one. It becomes completely abusable in its own deck. And lastly, to the added to the limit one list is Cyber. Why are there so many sus? Cyber Petite Angel. The weird part about this one is that reducing it to one actually makes it more playable because it removed it from the limit two list with the other two cards in its archetype. So now you can actually play at least all the Cyber Angel cards at once. So Jason, do you think the hits will affect the meta at all? Uh, slightly. With Dark Lords getting hit twice on this particular list, I can definitely see people using it even less and less and actually having to rely on more variety of skills. Now, speaking of skills, the skills in the game took a massive hit. A grand total of nine skills got hit all at the same time. Now, for me to get into them would take a lot longer than what is actually allowed for me at this particular time. And I damn sure can't say much with these damn teeth in my mouth. So I'm going to just let you know, all you Sartorius users or you beat down users, Get salty, because you got smacked in the face. And if y'all want some more answers to which ones got changed, check out the message board inside the game. It'll give you a complete loadout. And with that being said, I'm gonna hand it back to you, Dave. Excellent report, Jason. However, it seems like everyone's in like a spooky mood and I feel kind of left out. So I decided to, to bring my costume to the studio. Uh, what do you think? I'm a ghost. I can already see. One beat down wasn't enough for you. Come here!
I think they're kicking in. Uh, I can feel my face again. And our final story for the night uh, comes exclusive from a bunker unknown from our rumor correspondent, Hard Like Joe, who claims to have exclusive information on the TCG release of Chris Draw Needle Fiber. Welcome to the studio, Joe. Thanks, Dave. I appreciate you having me on here. The people deserve to know the truth. Yeah, uh, it's it's no problem. It's been almost two years since Kristron Needle Fiber supposedly came out in Japan. Two long and terrible years. Never since then, people have wondered about its eventual TCG release. As time went on and set after set was revealed with mm -hmm. no needle fiber in sight, wild rumors began flying through the Yu-Gi-Oh! community. Most were simply ridiculous, the mad ravings of trolls and memesters. But there were some mm. whispered quietly in back alley locals and shared among the damned participants of those forbidden YCX events, which seemed to be a bit more than mere comedy. As a fan of actual Christrons, I had to know. I had to find out the truth, and what I've discovered is far more horrible than you could possibly imagine. Are you okay, Joe? What I'm about to share with you has come whispered on the lips of a man who's dead now. There are people out there trying to conceal the truth. An organization larger and far more ancient than Konami. I fear I may not be long for this world. My only hope is that this reaches someone before it's too late. The truth is... There is no Kristron needle fiber. There never was. The entire thing is a conspiracy, a ruse perpetrated by eldritch forces that actually control uh -huh. the OCG. They want to manipulate the TCG to keep us thankful and afraid, gracious that we don't have to deal with such a broken card, and frightened of what would ever happen if it were released, all to absolutely butcher it when it's localized. It's a lie, though. Everything is a lie, don't you see? Not just needle fiber, but all link cards. They're linking us together, linking our blood. Every duel feeds the beast, Dave. It grows mighty and horrible. Can't you hear it? Can't you hear the wretched beating of Kazuki's heart? It comes for ye. Can't say that I do. Uh, thank you for reporting on that, though. Uh, and good luck with that whole blood thing, Joe. They need to know. Tell them, Dave! Tell them about Simo! He lo- Oh! Oh, it looks like we lost him. In more than one way. Thank you for bearing with us tonight for our spooky October edition of NewsGeo. Be sure to tune in next time uh, at the end of November, which will be my 30th birthday. I'm officially an old man at the end of next news geo. So that'll be that'll be really cool. But as always, thank you for joining us tonight. I have been Dave Nader 1, 2, and 2. Thank you to all of my correspondents, both standard and guest. And remember guys, if you don't troll the meta, I will see you guys next time for the next news geo. No time left in the video. I summon Dark Magician, declare direct attack. Subscribe for vids. Told you I was the master. Tell them about Simo! He likes ranch on his hot dogs! You don't understand!